I, I just don't know what to even say anymore. It's like the longest cycle of suck I've ever seen out of professional wrestling and notably, especially the WWE. It just doesn't get better. It's like you see this continuous downward trajectory and sure you've got the clowns that are gonna sit there and say, everything is fine. Stock price is near all time highs. They got all these big shows they're doing for big money in Saudi Arabia and in Australia and all this other jazz. And you got the people that are gonna sit there and say, well, all the people that cut cords nowadays, Television viewership across the board is naturally down, and as a result, it's the same old, played out, washed up, tired ass excuses. We have now gotten to a point where people are trying to normalize Raw, which just a few years back was getting four plus million viewers, now is at a point where they saw a slight uptick, a slight increase to 2.3 million damn viewers. That's where we're at now, 2.3 something million ass viewers are wrong. As far as the idiots sitting there talking about ratings are down across the board, okay, well then let's look relative to competition. And even during Monday Night Football, we'll take Monday Night Football out because it's an entirely different league. Although 20 years ago, if you remember back in the day when wrestling didn't suck, wrestling negatively impacted Monday Night Football in a significant damn way. Because more people thought wrestling was entertaining and cool than Monday Night Football, and that's a fact, Jack. That's absolutely true. You, you get past this, and you realize... That at least even when Raw was getting 2.5, 2.75, 3 million viewers, more than 3 million viewers, they were still either number one or number two, maybe number three in their time slot because they couldn't quite compete with the old people over 65, the whiteies that watch Fox News every Monday night. Can't quite overcome that. But you could at least dominate in the 18 to 49 demographic. You can still do relatively well to your competition on cable television on Monday nights. They're not even doing that, though. They're barely finishing in or outside in the top ten. The top ten? For a show that has 25 plus years of rules, 25 plus years of history on cable television, with the international infrastructure that it has in place, they're now getting their asses kicked by Tucker freaking Carlson and many others. You're now getting to the point where Raw is getting an awful lot closer to old impact viewership and ratings from six, seven years back than anybody maybe ever thought could ever be possible. That's not okay. You can take the excuses for the cutting of the cord and the drop of viewership overall and shove it up your ass because even related to the relevant competition that they have on Monday nights, they are more and more consistently, roundly, routinely getting their shit pushed in. So your excuse doesn't matter. It's dumb. It's like the whole thing about the stock price. You can do all these non-gap practices when you're reporting your earnings and your revenues to cook your books a little bit and make them look better than they really are. And even when you talk about the Saudis and Australia and all these other places doing all these other financial deals with WWE, Either one of two things happens. Either A, you end up having to rely upon those more and more, ignoring your home base more, which is not a good thing, or B, eventually that well starts to dry up. You can't necessarily always count on that forever. And as far as the financials, there is no way on God's green earth you can realistically tell me that a company that within the last 52 weeks once saw its stock price at $21 a share now has their stock price, as of yesterday, was like 90-something a share. Today, at close of trading, it was like 82-whatever-the-hell bucks a share. What the hell did WWE do over the course of the past 6, 9, 12 months that 
necessitated their stock being worth two, three, four damn times what it was before. Even if you say the television deal is upcoming with USA Network and Fox, uh-uh, that's not good enough. That doesn't explain that level of increase of value, especially with decreasing American television viewership. It is another reminder of how foolish it is to use the stock market as a true indication of economic success or failure because it's all bullshit. And that's what the WWE has been for a long time. You can argue since the days that they first went public in 99, they are bullshit. 2.3 million viewers is not kosher. 2.3 million viewers is not okay. 2.3 million viewers is a lot closer to negatively impacting you for the long term than you might want to believe. And you could talk about the company's lack of desire to sit there and create new stars, and that's absolutely true, and they're absolutely paying the price, and those chickens continue to come home to roost. But then you get to the point, they're bringing in Lita and Trish Stratus. They're bringing back geriatric acts. It's Shawn Michaels. It's Triple H. They're chopping the crotches, letting you know where the Viagra gets shot and the daughters come out of. So that way they can take on the brothers of one foot in the fucking grave, and the fans don't care. You take these legends, these icons, these big notable stars of the past, and you've ruined them over the years so much by having to go to the well so damn often that now when you really truly need that lift and that lift should be there, even the thought of somebody like Shawn Michaels coming back out of retirement to wrestle a match in freaking Saudi Arabia ain't getting the job done for any damn one. And yet the WWE will continue to sit there and keep themselves in their bubble like everything is okay. And it's not. When you are trotting out the Ascension versus Bobby Roode and Chad Gable in a tag match for what? Not one straight weeks, not two, not three, not four, not even five consecutive weeks, but six fucking consecutive weeks? That indicates apathy, laziness. That's pathetic. The WWE's continuing dropping viewership is pathetic. They're continuing losing of ground against competition in their time slots on Monday night is even more pathetic. If you can't be the best of the best, at least you be the best of the damn worst, and they can't even be that anymore. And all these shit making all these excuses, blowing out your smokestacks. How about the WWE, Vince McMahon, the powers that be, Try to actually show some respect for their fans, their paying customers, by saying, we need to be better. We should be better. We demand of ourselves, fuck anybody else, to be better. And clearly they don't, because they just tried it out the ascension the same exact damn playing match for six fucking weeks in a row on Raw. Not to mention all the times you'll have a big show or a pay-per-view event, and the next Raw, more than half the damn matches are on replay. Oh, we just saw this Sunday night. Here's a rematch Monday night. Why fucking bother watching this? Well, why the hell watching that? Everything is one gigantic waste of freaking time, which is exactly what the WWE has become today. And has been for some time. It's one thing we're talking about competition. But the real true measurement of success should be and can be that you do the best that you can to your possible abilities. You maximize your own potential and then you let the chips fall wherever they may. And WWE doesn't even care. Nobody with a straight face can sit there and tell you right now that WWE is as good as it can possibly be, the best it's ever has been, or as great as it can be. And most certainly nobody in the WWE the straight damn face can sit there and say to themselves, and say to anybody else with a straight conscience, and a straight face, mind you, that things are the best they've ever been. Because that's a big load of shit, and everybody fucking knows it. How I have some personal and professional pride in being better. Stop being so apathetic and flat out lazy with your damn product, and shake shit up. Do something different. Send the ascension come out six straight weeks. How about one week they start playing grab ass with Bobby Roode? They want to show him where the glory comes from. How about you have Chad Gable drop a deuce in the ring? Hey, some of you fuck sticks like I'll give you a hit. 
It ain't gonna work with them either. Why? Because hashtag WWE ruins everything. It's like these knuckleheads that sit there and wait for the Bullet Club to come to WWE. Oh my God, the Bullet Club! And they're super kicking, and they're super kicking, and they're super kicking. What the hell do you think they're gonna do? You can take the villain's umbrella, shine it up your eyes, and shove it all up your asses. The same guy that could get what maybe a couple hundred thousand people to watch their stuff on WGN and then a whole whopping like 20, 30,000 of them to buy the fucking pay per view. You think they're going to come in and be a big ratings boom to Raw and WWE? Are you insane? On top of all that, even if you have this undying faith in Omega and fucking Cody Fuckstick Rhodes, the Young Bucks, Screw and all these other guys, what the hell makes you think that WWE is going to do anything right with that? What the hell makes you think that WWE is going to take a look at these guys and have any fucking clue what to do with them? Because again, need I remind you, hashtag WWE ruins everything. It's most certainly the worst wrestling ever in this company's history. I can never think of a point in time. Even the mid-90s, they absolutely sucked. Take a look at 2018 WWE current state and say that is garbage. Because it is garbage. And the people that defend this crap are garbage. Hunter, Stephanie, garbage. You make all the excuses you want for them. They're very involved in the process and they've helped make it this way. They are garbage. Um, and most certainly of all, Kevin Dunn. What's up, Doc? I'm gonna do this carrot, get it real jagged, and send up a rough way up the poop shit. They can kick rocks and die for all I care to kiss my ass. Hey, fucking sucks. And most importantly of all, Vince McMahon. Too worried about trying to chase this pathetic XFL dream for the second fucking go round, taking his eye off the ball. Imagine that once again, showing absolutely no willingness. To give a crap, shake shit up, do something different. I'm going to bring in the old guys like I've done 500 damn times before. Think about it. His answer to struggling TV viewership this week on SmackDown was to main event Randy Orton in the Big Show. Randy Orton in the Big Show. In 2018, main event in the SmackDown. Have some fucking pride in yourself, WWE. Have some professional and personal pride. Be ashamed. It's okay to say we've lost and we don't know what the fuck we're doing, but by God, we're going to try and be better because this is pathetic. Because it is pathetic. And the longer you let this go on, it's just going to cause more and more damage, and you're going to be even more pathetic, and we're going to be looking in a couple of years and be like, who? Huh? I remember the days when 2.3 million viewers was really good. Now they're getting 1.3 million viewers. When are they going to get below a million? And that time draws a lot closer at hand than you think. Five to seven years, if nothing changes, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. And for all the people that used to crap out and not die on impact, think about how stupid you're going to look that a decade plus after impact's real peak, TNA's real peak, WWE's drawn the same damn numbers. Fucking handle with this shit! It's not that hard! Take some damn pride in what you do and be better! 2.3 million viewers, they'll be ashamed of themselves! Go into their meetings this upcoming week, Monday, whatever, at Titan Towers, and everybody should turn to the person in their right, who will kick them straight in the crotch! Turn to the person in the left and kick them straight up the ass! Because I don't know what else is going to get the job done at this point. They're so concerned about their egos and so fucking insecure that they can never take any criticism or any negativity and turn that into a learning experience. If you're not learning, if you're not growing in the business world, you are absolutely dying. And that's why the WWE is slowly dying. And don't say I didn't try to warn you. It's a sinking ship. It's dying a lot quicker than you think it is.